What is the secret tool that cruisers use to drastically reduce their boat problems? It is the mighty checklist. If you've used checklists in your previous professional or home life, using them on your boat won't be a difficult transition. But some cruisers forget the benefits of using checklists. They get on their boat and wing it rather than create routines and procedures that enable a happy running boat. Boat life is all about going with the flow and being adaptable and flexible. It's about throwing a bit of caution to the wind and allowing your spontaneous and carefree lifestyle to finally present itself. Back home in your land-based life, you had deadlines, appointments, due dates, structure, routines, rules, and restrictions. That's not what you want on a boat. You want freedom. You want the space to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And that is what a cruiser's life is about. But there are exceptions. Boats are mechanical. They're also living in the harshest conditions on Earth. Anything surrounded by salt water is in a constant state of perpetual decomposition. Without proactive servicing, things will fail. For example, if you fail to properly service your engine routinely, doing the same tasks at the same time every so many weeks, it's going to eventually stop working. And let me assure you, if it's going to stop working, it's usually in the worst spot, like the entrance of a marina or between two reefs. And humans are imperfect. Being a boat owner requires a humongous amount of working memory. Without a set of reminders, it's possible to miss one or many critical steps while maintaining and operating a boat. For example, a simple day out sailing consists of making a plan, working backwards to ensure preparations for the plan are possible, and then working the plan. You have to check the weather, understand the tides and sea state, plan a passage, do the engine and rig checks, ensure safety systems are operating correctly, brief any crew or guests on what the day involves, ensure food and drinks are already prepared or easy to prepare, safely leave your current location, and this is all before you even set sail. I don't want to come across like cruising life is no different from life on land. Cruising life is amazing. Getting the sails up, turning the engine off, and allowing the boat to slice through the deep blue sea is nothing short of magical. Having the warm breeze in your face, feeling the sun on your skin, and looking out at a variety of amazing landscapes is priceless. But that's the reward for a heck of a lot of hard work. So how do checklists help a cruiser? First of all, they will help you to stay more organized by ensuring you don't skip a step. For example, before every voyage, it's important to check, at the very least, the engine water, oil, belts, batteries, check around for leaks, look at the electrical systems, and look through the strainers. You also want to ensure that when you start the engine, you can see the exhaust coming out. Skipping any of those okay. steps could prove disastrous. And something's blown on the engine. The water came in. Um, it, that's the village, it's pouring out. And so we're just floating. We're kind of close to an island. I think this is pretty serious. We need to get somewhere where we can anchor. Second, checklists are motivational in their own right. When you have a set procedure to follow, you'll feel compelled to do it. Third, checklists will allow you to complete repetitive tasks more quickly and efficiently with fewer mistakes. For example, there are quite a few steps involved in wintering a boat or putting it up on the hard. Since this task is done infrequently, perhaps once a year or once every several years, it's important to follow all the steps. Like ensuring that the cockpit and deck drains are left open is imperative. If they're closed, it's possible for the boat to flood. This happens too often. A boat owner leaves his boat on the hard, the cockpit fills up with rain and finds its way into the boat and floods the engine and ruins the interior. Fourth, another benefit of having boat checklists is clarity. Checklists mean fewer fire drills and less stress helping you think more clearly. When we grab or leave a mooring ball, there's a very set procedure we use. We do the same thing every time. By following our checklist, when issues arise, we're more prepared for them. We are clear as to what's wrong and can usually be creative to find a solution. 
Since we follow a checklist, we can also analyze what went wrong and determine if there's something we could add or remove from our list to improve the procedure. Fifth, and this is a big one, checklists enable easier delegation. Now that we offer 7-10 to 10 day experiential liveaboard cruiser charters, we have to quickly and easily delegate jobs. We have a variety of checklists to hand our guests so they can not only help to prepare and maintain the boat, but also learn what it takes to keep the boat in good shape. Some of the checklists we delegate include engine checks, pre-passage checks, after-passage checks, rigging and safety system checks, anchoring and mooring, taking the dinghy to land, and daily cleaning duties. We always walk our guests through a checklist the first time. Thereafter, allow them to follow the checklist themselves so they can clearly understand the process. It helps our guests learn the liveaboard life and frees up time for us to do other tasks. Having a variety of checklists is great for children too. It allows them to feel included and important. Sixth, checklists can ultimately save lives. We have a variety of safety checklists ensuring that we keep on top of our life-saving equipment. Every year at the same time we collect all our flotation devices like life jackets, life raft, or down boy, and have them tested in addition to inspecting every safety device on our boat. Without a reminder checklist and a list of items to check, we would not be able to properly understand the state of our life-saving devices. Seventh, checklists allow for continued improvement. We often add a new step or find an alternative way of doing something. By having a set checklist, it makes it easy to insert something new and truly hit the ground running. For example, we have a spare parts checklist that are mandatory to have on board at all times. If we use something in our spare parts list, we do our best to replace it as quickly as possible. Since we've been sailing for over six years, that list has grown over time. If you're unsure of what checklist you may or may not need or want on your boat, download our free checklist. It's called Suggested Checklist for Sailors. Getting the checklist will enable you to consider which checklist will help you to make your cruising life more enjoyable. Get the checklist here.